The World Series on Fox brought to you by Dodge. You can take life as it comes or you can grab life by the horns. Dodge. By MasterCard, there are some things money can't buy. For everything else, there's MasterCard. By State Farm, like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. And by DHL, we move the world. On his way in from the bullpen after getting as warm as he can on a night like this. Kurt Schilling acknowledging the fans sitting over near the Red Sox dugout. Little fist into the air and saying, I'm going to go get him. We'll wait and see. A look at the Cardinals lineup. And that's brought to you by Citibank. Edgar Renteria will lead it off. It's short. Larry Walker batting second and right. Albert Pujol sitting third. Scott Rowland is the cleanup man. Edmonds in center. Reggie Sanders in left field tonight. Womack at second. Matheny does the catching. And Marlon Anderson is the DH. The right-hander Kurt Schilling, 37 years old, will turn 38 next month. And he makes his 15th career postseason start. The bad ankle is his right ankle. That's the ankle off of which he pushes. And it shouldn't affect Schilling like it will affect some pitchers because when you can't push off of that ankle, you have a tendency to get the ball up. But Schilling's a high ball pitcher anyway with that splitter down in the dirt. A big game guy. He has been throughout his career and certainly earned his money. High fastballs and low splitters from Kurt Schilling. Moments ago, Kurt Schilling was checking the footing between the mound and the home plate area, checking on the grass, not only in front of the mound, but down toward the baselines, third base and first base. The Cardinals expect to challenge Schilling's fielding ability in this game, much more than the Yankees did. That wasn't even a factor in game six of the ALCS, to the surprise of some. Baseball fans, grab a cold, fresh Budweiser. It's game time. Tony La Russa saying our big guys won't do a lot of bunting, but guys like Renteria, Womack, Marlon Anderson, if the situation is there, they will try to drop one down. And because of that, with Renteria up, Bill Miller is pulled way in at third. Glad you're with us. Game two and it's on the outside corner. Strike one. It's Renteria, Walker, and then Pujols. Edgar last night, two out of four with an RBI. One ball, one strike. We paid some attention to the velocity from Schilling in that game six start against the Yankees. Middle part of the game, it started to dip, and then when he needed a better fastball late, he still had 93 94. With a 94 mile an hour fastball, he misses two and one. Misses high and just a bit outside. Yeah, the only run against Kurt Schilling come, coming on a 3 1 fastball to Bernie Williams in the seventh inning. Here's a 2 1 to Renteria, 2 and 2. Schilling making his sixth World Series start. Two and one overall. Renteria stays up there. Really last night for the Cardinals they had their chances. Tim mentioned the four errors by the Boston Red Sox. They were also handed walks five by the starter Wakefield one late an intentional pass. But it was the middle of the order the big bats the big money players that did not get any hits for the Cardinals last night when they needed them. 2 2 pitch. Good adjustment by Renneria to stay up there. Renneria got on base three times last night Walker was on five times. Who also was hitless. Roland was hitless. Edmonds only had a single on a bunt. Here's a 2 2 to Renteria. Full count.
Good at bat by Renteria, forcing Schilling to show everything he has. Fastball, slider, and the splitter. On three and two, Renteria, another foul ball. Kurt Schilling was originally with the Boston Red Sox, and he was signed by Ray Boone, the late Ray Boone. Signed back in 1986, two years with the Red Sox organization, then traded to Baltimore, and on to Houston, Philadelphia, Arizona, and now back with Boston. Another 3 2 pitch. And another foul ball that will end up out of play. So this will be at least a 10 pitch at bat for Renteria to start the night. Chris Myers telling us and Terry Francona for Chris that it is not necessarily a pitch count. But they're worried about with Kurt Schilling but how the ankle feels and how his arm responds. Here's another 3 2. And Edgar Renteria is having an outstanding at bat. How will tonight start for St. Louis? Kurt Schilling, it's going to take at least 12 pitches to get Renteria for the first out of the night. Schilling in the World Series with Philadelphia back in 93. And then made those three starts against the Yankees with Arizona in 2001. Another 3 2, and Renteria chops it to Cabrera. Low throw, dug out by Millar, one out. Take a look at the defense. Now Boston covers the field. Brought to you by State Farm. Ramirez, who had an adventure last night in left. Damon in center. Trot Nixon in right. Miller, Cabrera, Bellhorn, Millar. Veritek back behind the plate. Didn't start last night. With Wakefield on the mound. And it's Schilling tonight in the middle of it. And a good play by Millar on the back end. That was a 3-2 splitter. That ball out of the strike zone down to Renteria. You could tell by the way he swung at the ball. Not too often do you throw the leadoff batter a 3 2 splitter. You usually challenge him. That's a fastball on the inside corner. Strike one to Walker. Had been one for his last 13 in the postseason. That was at the end of the NLCS, and then last night broke out. Four out of five. Reached base all five times he came to the plate. As that pitch misses inside a ball and a strike. Who holds next? Walker hits it in the air to right. Nixon with out number two. And that'll bring in Albert Pujols. 0 for 3 in game one, was hit by a pitch, was intentionally walked, and hitting 413 during this postseason. Last night was the highest scoring game one in World Series history. A total of 20 runs and an 11 9 victory for Boston. Schilling, as in game six against the Yankees, very deliberate out on the mound. Strike one on the outside corner to Pools. The statistics that Pools is putting together at the beginning of his career are staggering. His fourth season. Got at least 30 home runs, 100 runs scored, and 100 RBIs in each of his first four seasons. The first player in Major League Baseball history to do.
do that. And he was the MVP of the National League Championship Series. And he carried the Cardinals on to victory over Houston. A 1 1. Pujols plugs the gap in left center field, and that ball will skip all the way to the wall. Albert Pujols with the double with two out here in the first inning. Kurt Schilling had retired Edgar Renteria on a split finger fastball. Larry Walker on a splitter and he tries to get Albert Pujols on a splitter. You talk about an investment in himself. Six years ago Albert Pujols signed with the St. Louis Cardinals for ten thousand dollars. Five and a half years later he signed a seven year contract for a hundred million dollars. Pretty good return on investment. And one of the things he did was lose a lot of weight. Problem he battled and finally kept the weight off. And I guess it's easier to keep off the weight if you're constantly running around the bases, <laughs> which is what he's done from the first second he got to the big leagues. First pitch is strike to Scott Rowland. A great relationship between the man at the plate. And the guy in the dugout for the Red Sox, Terry Francona, the Boston manager. Scott Rowland was a rookie of the year in 97 with the Phillies. That was Terry Francona's first year as a big league manager. That year, Rowland at 283, 21 home runs, 92 RBIs. And you talk about a mutual admiration society, they have it for one another. Rowland thought the world of Francona. And Francona could not have more glowing things to say about the way Roland plays the game. And then as has been reported when Francona was fired after being in Philadelphia for three seasons Scott Roland's parents were among the first to call Francona wishing him luck and thanking him for all he did in Philadelphia. Three balls and a strike last night before the game. Francona went to the Cardinal Clubhouse to see Roland, and then during the pregame introductions, crossed that line and went over and shook the hand of Scott Roland in front of a packed house here at Fenway. Roland could put St. Louis and Matt Morris on top here in the first. Trying to hold up, could not pull count. With first base open, even though it's the first inning, Schilling throws the splitter out of the strike zone. And Roland commits. Former teammates in Philadelphia hooking up Kurt Schilling, Scott Roland. Roland, a line drive, laser to third, caught by Miller. Roland could not have hit it any harder. It caught Miller over at third, and after a half, no score at Fenway. The World Series on Fox brought to you by the new Chevrolets. Ten new cars and trucks in 20 months, an American revolution. By City Business, that's a card you can count on. And by IBM, making on-demand business a reality for companies around the world. Hit the idiot, win a prize. Idiot's a nice word around Fenway these days, and Matt Morris is on the mound for St. Louis, and he starts Damon with a fastball strike. Matt Morris, inconsistent all year, was still a 15-game winner. His fourth start of this postseason, he's 0-1. One ball, one strike on Damon. Free agent to be is Matt Morris, 30-year-old right-hander. Attended Seton Hall University as he misses outside two and one. How important is Johnny Damon to the Red Sox attack? The games that Boston has lost in this postseason. Total of three games he's hit 077. In the eight they've won he's hit 326. He sets the table for the big bats in the middle of this Boston lineup. Three one pitch to Damon. Full count. A squirter over to.
to third. Roland has to throw off balance. What a play. What a phenomenal throw by Roland with his momentum carrying him toward his dugout to get the speedy Damon for out number one. Well, there are some times that third baseman do not have the luxury of planning and throwing, but Roland showing how strong his arm can be while going the other way. Fine play by the gold glover at third for the Cardinals. With one down, the batter is Cabrera. Orlando has got an eight-game hitting streak going. Hit in every game of the ALCS. And last night, one for four. Takes a ball. Three hops to Renteria. Two up, two down. Take a look at the lineup for the Boston Red Sox. You know the first two. It's brought to you by Citibank. Damon Cabrera. Now it's Manny Ramirez. Then it's the DH, David Ortiz, Jason Veritek in the number five spot, Millar at first, Trot Nixon in right, Bill Miller at third, and Mark Bellhorn at second batting ninth. Two outs do not a pitcher's performance make, but two ground ball outs, good early news for the Cardinals and Matt Morris. That was a perfectly constructed sentence. Thank you. I'm so proud of that. With two out and nobody on, Ramirez over the outside corner, he take it, strike one. Going old English on us yeah, for a second. We're going to <laughs> two ground ball outs. Ramirez. 0 oh 2. Matt Morris had by far his best postseason performance, and if that's the case, his best performance ever with a pressure on him. Game five of the division series back in 2001. It was on a Sunday night, and he was matched up against Kurt Schilling. Pitching for the Diamondbacks. In that game, it ended two to one. Thanks to a hit by Tony Womack, who now plays for the Cardinals. Reggie Sanders homered off Morris in that game, who plays for the Cardinals now. Both guys in the lineup behind him. And Schilling beat him, giving up only a home run to J.D. Drew, who played in this postseason for the Atlanta Braves. Morris eight innings, a run on seven hits. Schilling nine innings, a run on six hits. Here they hook up in game two of the 2004 World Series. 2-2 two -two to Ramirez. Full count. First two strikes on Manny Ramirez. A lot tougher than the third strike. He is an outstanding two-strike hitter. A two out walk Ortiz is coming up. Take a look at how St. Louis covers the field and they can cover the field. It's brought to you by State Farm. Sanders Edmonds and Walker in the outfield with Roland Renteria Womack and Pujols. Matheny and Morris the battery. Here is David Ortiz who has tied a postseason record with his 19 RBIs. So far between the division series the LCS and his action last night with his four RBIs in game one. Morris comes right after him with a 92 mile an hour fastball strike one. Matt Morris pitching on three days rest for the first time in his big league career. Ball one strike. Cardinal pitchers will try to crowd David Ortiz up and in. Ball he hit last night was a slider off Woody Williams that was down and in. We haven't seen that good Matt Morris curveball yet. As he misses down and away, two balls and a strike. He has a tough time throwing that curveball, Joe, from the from the stretch. A lot of guys with that much leg drive. This is, of course, is a fastball. But you need the leg drive when you're winding up to get on top of the curveball and make it go down. Ortiz let it fly, and it's two and two. For the most part, back in that 2001 season when Morris was a 22 game winner. 
was a fastball curveball pitcher. Now he's added a changeup. He doesn't throw as hard as he did. 2 2 pitch. And Ortiz just got a piece to stay up there. Yeah, but that was a lazy curveball thrown from the stretch. The first curveball of the night thrown by Matt Morris. Ortiz trying to start it with a bang again tonight. Still two and two. Last night stepped up and cracked a three run first inning homer. The Red Sox, as Ortiz just cracked his bat, ended up with four runs in the first inning. At one point led seven to two. It was then seven to seven, nine to seven, nine to nine, and it ended thanks to a home run by Bellhorn. In the eighth inning, 11 9 Boston. How about the last handful of games for David Ortiz? Last five games this postseason, a 364 average, two game ending hits. Three and two with Veritech next. Ramirez will go from first. To back walks and a scoring opportunity for Boston here in the first inning. Matt Morris was originally told that Jason Marquis was going to pitch game two of this World Series. Then Tony La Russa and Dave Duncan met about it, thought about it, and switched. Because of the postseason experience that Morris possessed coming into this series. So they moved him up. And if there is a game six of this World Series, he would have another start here at Fenway Park. He's in a first inning jam now with two on and two out. Baritak Browns foul. 13 walks in last night's ball game, eight by the Cardinals. Tony La Russa saying that the walks really killed the Redbirds last night. Barry Tech with 14 RBIs in his last 17 games. Going back into the regular season. The 0-1. Barry Tech went 0-2. And, and as you said with Ramirez. Even for Morris, the first two strikes haven't been hard to find against these Red Sox hitters. But after getting out in front of Ramirez and Ortiz, he walked the three and four hitters. Now it's an 0-2 count on Veritek. Ball one. The throw there, too late, two nothing, Boston. That looked like a changeup, down and in to Jason Baratek, and Jason parking it. About 410 feet away from home plate. Just missed a home run. Right next to the 420 side. Veritek puts the Red Sox on the board. Now Millar takes a pitch down and in. Three straight hitters with two strikes, and Morris lost all three of them. Runner at third, two down. Millar takes outside, 2-0. Oh.
Veritek when he made his slide into third ripped his pants. The 2 0 on the outside corner 2 and 1. There might be other position players who would not need to change pants but catchers do. The Red Sox are 7 and 0 this postseason when they score first. And thanks to back to back walks. And the two run triple by Veritek. It's 2 nothing here in the first inning with a chance for more 3 and 1 on Millar. First and third, three walks in the first inning from Matt Morris. And that'll bring Dave Duncan out of the dugout. If you combine the regular season and the postseason, Matt Morris on the road, six and seven, with an ERA of just under six at home this season, nine and four. Last night, St. Louis Cardinal pitchers threw 189 pitches to the Boston Red Sox batters. 37 were fouled off, and the Red Sox swung through only nine. The point being that the Cardinals really don't have power pitchers that can overpower the Red Sox and strike them out in key situations. Trot Nixon now stands in first and third two out. Nixon grounds to Roland and the inning is over but not before the Red Sox jump out in front thanks to a two run triple by Veritek. Jim Edmonds first up for St. Louis pops up the first pitch left side foul territory. Long run, Veritek, Miller, and they come together and drop it. That's not the first time that's happened. That happened in the ALCS. That is Miller's ball, and we mentioned at the time that Veritek has such range behind home plate. You don't normally think of a catcher with range, but because he's over there, that's clearly Miller's ball. Bill has to call Veritek off right away, but it's tough to call him off when he's set up like that. That should be the fifth error of this World Series for the Red Sox. As Jim Edmonds takes a pitch up and in. It's almost a case for team errors. If it's an error, who do you give it to? Miller or Veritek? I'll let you decide. <laughs> Edmonds leading off this second inning. Well that plays a very difficult play for a catcher to make. The third baseman's coming in on the ball much much easier for a third baseman in third base foul territory or a first baseman in first base foul territory to make that play. They gave the error to Miller. It doesn't matter to Schilling as he gets the ground out to first. One away here in the second inning and Reggie Sanders will be the batter. Sanders starting in left field tonight. Last night was the DH with So Taguchi. Starting in left. Sanders with one out. Shops it foul. Kurt Schilling during the regular season won 21 games. He had an ERA of 3.26, which was good for second in the American League. And was number three in strikeouts with 203. With one out, nobody on. Sanders waits for an 0 1 pitch. Down and away, one ball, one strike. 
we I think take for granted Tim that people know exactly what has happened with Kurt Schilling at the end of the regular season and then into the postseason in that first start uh, against the Angels in the division series as Sanders went and he's in the hole one and two. It's the sheath around the peroneal tendon in his right ankle. And that tendon was loose and flipping from one side of the ankle bone to the other. And that's what gave him the pain, that clicking. Here's a one-two pitch to Sanders, two and two. The medical staff devised a way to try to keep that tendon in place as they try to fight against the possible rupture of that tendon. And they actually suture it out of place, but trying to keep it stable, and trying to keep the pain to a minimum. That ankle is shot up with Marcane. Uh, short lasting anesthetic as well. So Schilling is doing what he can to drive off that right leg, that right ankle. He brings home these 93 94 mile an hour fastballs. He's two and two on Sanders. Well, something like that with Reggie Sanders stepping out on him can't help that ankle. That tendon is more or less used for the balancing between the ankle and the foot, the right foot. Filling a real drop and drive pitcher, but again, should be hurt less with a, an injury like that because he's a high fastball pitcher anyway. The 2 2. Full count. And then Kurt Schilling, who is nothing if not an outstanding promoter, using his abilities to make his case yet again for ALS research. Writing that K and then ALS right above the area in the area where he knows our Fox cameras will focus during the course of tonight's game. The strikeout ALS, Lou Gehrig's disease. Here he issues a one-out walk, and here is Kurt Schilling talking about his options and what they did to that right ankle. Given the fact that this was, it was either this or not pitch, um, this was the choice. Uh, they basically what they did was they, uh, uh, and it didn't take long. They just went in and they, they sutured the skin down to the tissue on the bone between my two tendons, the dislocated tendon and the tendon that's in the normal place, to keep the dislocated tendon out of place uh, so it wouldn't pop back in and out during the game. Tony Womack now takes high, ball one. It was, I guess, in the category of a radical procedure something that hadn't been tried before and by developing that I guess instant cure short term cure and put him back on the mound runner going and Sanders will end up at third base he's going back to the bag and is confused after Womack gets the hit into right center field I don't know if somebody deked him or not but for some reason Sanders stopped running. Well, usually, if you're going to be decoyed around second base, it's going to be before you get there. I think Reggie may have thought that he missed second base or perhaps slipped over second base because he had rounded the bag, and for whatever reason, he stopped. Let's see if he missed it. Yeah, I think he, I thought, I think he thought he missed it. And he may have, you could tell him, you could tell there, getting his hands up to keep Tony Womack from going to second base. So they didn't have a roadblock. We've got a microphone in that bag. And sometimes when you pick up the ball, I think you hit the bag. But sometimes when you pick up the ball, Messes up your timing and your pacing going around second base. The bag's on top of you before you know it. And that's what happened to Reggie Sanders then. 
So instead of having runners on at second and third, the Cardinals have runners on at first and second. Big difference. Big difference with one out in the inning. The count's gone to two and all on Matheny. I don't know if it's definitive to listen to that replay with the microphone in the bag and know for sure whether that's his foot hitting the bag or hitting the dirt right next to the microphone. Well, if he did touch the bag, it's on the other side, and no base runner will touch the bag on the other side. Try to touch that corner, and the corner pushes you off toward the next base. Two balls and a strike on Matheny, who last night knocked home two runs with two sack flies. By falling into a big hole last night, Tony La Russa didn't have the opportunity to do what he did with Womack at the plate, and that is start runners, try to get action going on the bases, down 2 nothing here in the second. Sanders was running on the hit into right center by Womack, but either by missing the bag or by not picking up the ball, stopped at second. Now Sanders is stealing third, and Matheny lines into an inning-ending double play. If there were no one out, it would have been a triple play. So Miller going to the bag with Sanders running is there for the line drive, and it's 2 0 Boston after an inning and a half. Bill Miller, who caught the line drive at the front end of the inning ending double play, will lead it off. And it's the left. Arm of Reggie Sanders that catches Bill Miller right in the jaw as he makes the tag on Sanders, who was running on the play. Sanders was going to third, Womack down to second. Athene hit the line drive for the out. Double play, bottom of the second, 2 0 Boston. On the two out, two run triple by Veritas. Miller pops it up foul down the right side out of play. 0 oh 2. Miller, then Bellhorn, then Damon. To the right side. Womack can't get to it, and Miller is on with a leadoff hit. Bellhorn will walk to the plate. Bank of America, the official bank of Major League Baseball, donates $10,000 to the Intrepid Fallen Heroes Fund for every home run in the World Series. Last night's home runs by David Ortiz, Larry Walker, and Mark Bellhorn mean $30,000 for the families of military personnel who have given their lives in the current operations in defense of our country. Now with one on and nobody out, Here's a guy who hit, in essence, the game-winning shot last night in the eighth, Mark Bellhorn. Ball one. The home run, one of two Bellhorn hits last night. On the outside corner, Chris Myers. Joe, uh, Sox hitting coach Ron Jackson said Bellhorn struggles uh, turned around. The last two games in New York, he told Bellhorn when he was swinging, he wasn't getting his hands back first before swinging forward. Once he did that, he got the power, he put in the extra time, made a difference in his swing, and uh, Bellhorn now is getting his hands back before lunging forward. Ron Jackson said now he, uh, he doesn't have to say anything to Bellhorn. Bellhorn doesn't say much back. Francona first got to the Red Sox. He thought, "Why? How did I make Bellhorn mad? He doesn't talk to me. He doesn't talk to many people." The quiet second baseman takes a pitch up and away, two and two. Bell plus Horn, Bellhorn equals home run. Huh. Full count now on Bellhorn. Damon next and Matt Morris the curveball is so vital to the success for Morris and he has not thrown a good one yet. I don't think you send Miller here. Bellhorn swings through too many pitches. 
Double play ball to second. Womack flips. Renteria in the middle. Two out. You don't start the runner, Tim, and that's why you get the double play. It's what happened. Four, the six, Red, three. The Red Sox don't do this a lot. They don't start runners on three, two counts. They don't hit and run a lot. They sacrificed only 12 times. They sit back and hammer. <laughs> and they can do it that is, with the best of them. That is their offense. Sit back and wail away. A strike is into Johnny Damon, who's rounded out to third on a very good play by Roland, his first time up. One ball, one strike. Cardinals in the third will have Anderson, the DH, then Renteria, and Larry Walker. On the outside corner, strike two to Damon. Tied up, he strikes out. First strikeout for Morris tonight. Third inning now. Fenway Park, 2 0 Red Sox. Kurt Schilling goes to work. Third inning in the first pitch with Anderson showing fun. Pulling Miller in at third is a strike. That's what Marlin has done this postseason. Last night took over for the injured Womack. He was hit on the collarbone on a bad hop and went one for two. That's inside a ball and a strike. To the amazement of Tony La Russa, the head of the grounds crew here with the Red Sox came in to apologize to the Cardinals because of the bad hop. Came in and apologized to Tony La Russa. La Russa said, I've never had somebody from the grounds crew apologize to me for a bad hop that cost my team. He said, if I see Womack, I'm going to say it to him because I take that stuff personally. Classy move. Womack able to answer the bell tonight as Anderson takes high two and two. Schilling has yet to strike out a hitter. Cardinals have hit some balls hard tonight. 2-0 Boston, third inning. And Anderson is jammed. He pops it up. It's Millar from his first base position. One out. Brad Mills is the bench coach for the Boston Red Sox. And he had this to say to Orlando Cabrera after that base running play in the second. Oh, did you deke him at second or did he miss a bag? Oh, oh, I see. Oh, okay. Yeah, but the decoy didn't work. Whenever a runner looks back at the hitter, he picks up the ball. The problem with Reggie Sanders. As Renteria grounds the short two out, was when he picked up the ball, he lost second base stepped over the bag and had to retreat and Womack had to go back to first. So he picks up the ball, now picks up the ball in center field, steps over the bag, has to retreat and tells Womack, whoa, whoa, Tony, go back, and he did. And that, the last couple of replays that we've seen, I think, clearly shows that Reggie Sanders missed the bag entirely, and that sound that we had earlier was his foot hitting the dirt near that microphone, not the base. Larry Walker fouls away strike number one. Walker flying to right his first time up. Schilling looks for his first one, two, three inning. That's foul. Counts 0 and 2.
first strikeout. Bottom of the third inning, game two. Red Sox bat. They lead two zip. Matt Morris will deal with Cabrera, Ramirez, and Ortiz, the two, three, and four hitters for the Red Sox here in the third inning. After the first out, I have a chance to play an interview we just did with Tony La Russa. 2 0 Boston, and the first pitch is inside for ball one to Orlando Cabrera, who grounded out to short first time up. Runs coming in the first on two out walks to Ramirez and Ortiz, followed by a two run triple by Veritek. Two all from Morris. Pass ball, ground ball, foul. Down the third baseline. Two and one. Yes. Skipping foul. The last five feet or so. Orlando Cabrera wearing a famous number in baseball. Usually a number reserved for sluggers. Henry Aaron wore number 44. Reggie Jackson. Number 44, Willie McCovey. The 2 1, 3 and 1. Took over for a guy that wore number 5, Delmar Garcia Parra. Here's a 3 1. Out in front of that pitch, and that's fouled out of play. Full count. There was a mist that was blowing around Boston all afternoon and into the early evening but as we started this game just after eight o'clock the rain has held off. Hop comes up for Roland. One out and our quick chat with Tony La Russa moments ago. Tony La Russa says this uh, game is in the third inning. A word about Matt Morris and the curveball. We haven't seen that curveball too much so far tonight. Well, that uh, I mean it'll come, but he said, you know, I've, I've been impressed with his stuff. Uh, you know, made an 0-2 mistake and walked a couple guys early. But I like the way he's throwing, and you know, he'll feature. I mean, little by little, you will see it all. How about the swings that your hitters have had against Schilling tonight, and the base running of Sanders missing second base <laughs> in the second? Well, I mean, I thought. I mean, we, I think we're taking great at bats. We had two great chances. The first two, Scotty's ball. We go about it that way. Sooner or later, we'll break through if Matt, if Matt holds down. Thank you. With one out, a strike over the outside corner, and it's quickly 0 2 on Manny Ramirez. The one thing you do from a catcher's standpoint, if a pitcher doesn't have his curveball in the early innings, you realize that if he's going to last through the game, six, seven innings, you've got to bring that curveball along somehow. Call it in, or call for it in situations that aren't dangerous, like this one, 0 and 2, or you waste it, you bring it along. That's down the right field line foul, and I would imagine if we talked about feel on a cold night last night for somebody like Wakefield with a knuckleball, there's a lot of feel that's involved with a curveball, and you can see. It is a cold night here at Fenway. The 0-2. That one misses for ball one. That was a good curveball because it was out of the strike zone. Try to get a hitter to expand the strike zone. You can see Matheny heading up outside. Curveball in the dirt. One ball, two strikes. Ramirez walked and scored his first time, and he is the second strikeout victim from Morris. We recognize the excellent season of managing the Cardinals by Tony La Russa, brought to you by Honda Pilot. La Russa piloted the Cardinals to 105 regular season wins, the most of any team in his long career as a manager, and it was the second best season win total in Cardinal franchise history. Two out here in the third inning. Here's Ortiz. And there's a fly ball down the left. 
left field line slicing foul strike one. That's the thing about David Ortiz he can spread his power to any part of the ballpark. Fenway Park asymmetrical. Not anywhere like Bush Stadium in St. Louis where the Cardinals and Red Sox will be playing on Tuesday night. One ball one strike. He won the divisional championship game against the Anaheim Angels by hitting a home run to left field. He beat the Yankees with a home run to right field. Hard hit to Pujols. She will lead it off for St. Louis in the fourth. Going there, still two nothing. Red Sox on top here in Game Two. The World Series on Fox is brought to you by Bud Light, fresh, smooth, real. It's all here. We move into the fourth inning. Game two of this World Series, and it's Pujols, Roland, and Edmonds. Three guys that have to get it going if the Cardinals are going to win this World Series against the Red Sox pitching. Kurt Schilling has allowed no runs on two hits, has one strikeout, one walk. Pujols has one of the two hits, a two out double in the first. A 1 0. 2 0. We had a chance to visit with Terry Francona during the break, and we'll give you that brief talk when we get a chance here in the top of the fourth. Pujols will look to hammer a pitch on 2 0. Instead, he's taking all the way, and it's 2 1. The three, four, and five hitters combined in the first two rounds of this postseason carrying this Cardinal offense. 29 RBIs among that trio, 371 average. Last night, one for 12, no RBIs, and that's down into the corner. Albert Pujols already has one double, and he will cruise into second base with his second of the night. And for the first time tonight, the Cardinals put their leadoff man on. 51 doubles on the regular season and two in a row for Pools. What a talent. Here's Scott Rowland. He hit a laser over to third, caught by Bill Miller to end the top of the first. And the Red Sox went to work. With two out walks to Ramirez and Ortiz and a triple to drive them both home by Veritek. Strike one inside corner. Not even a thought by Scott Rowland to advance the runner to third and give himself up. He advances Pujols. He wants to advance him to home plate. Driving in 124 runs on the regular season. He's an RBI man. They don't advance runners. And now Veritek's going to go out and talk. Dave Wallace is the pitching coach with the Boston Red Sox. Players refer to that, by the way, as glovies. Whenever a man's on second base and a pitcher puts his glove over his mouth, that's glovies. That's the language of a pitcher to a catcher. With a runner on at second. What did he say? Don't know. And now Schilling steps off, so he is concerned with the runner out at second, and there is glove ease. Glove ease. Here's an 0 1 pitch rolling. One ball, one strike. On deck is Edmonds. Straight back, strike two. 
Kurt Schilling in his career five and nine against St. Louis with an ERA of four and a half. And with that right ankle and that dislocated tendon trying to beat him here on a cold October night. Trying to help his Red Sox go up two games to none. As Roland set up. And Roland sticks the bat out into right field. Nixon coming on. Nice catch. Tagging and going to third with good base running is Albert Pujols. One out. The reason that it's good base running is Pujols doesn't know whether this ball is going to drop or not. But because Nixon hits the grass, Pujols has a chance to tag and go to third base. And Trot maintained his footing. Perhaps Pujols doesn't tag. Good base running. You're right, Joe. Cardinals have a couple of guys that aren't in the category of fast, but are extremely smart base runners. Pujols is one and Roland is the other. I think Scott Roland's the best base runner in the National League. Foot foot speed for foot speed. See when Nixon goes to the turf. Then Pujols had an idea about tagging and now he takes that couple extra strides back and makes it to third without a play. So that makes the RBI chance easier for Edmonds. Gets out of the way of ball one inside. Edmonds has nine RBIs this postseason. Two very big ones in the NLCS, winning game six with an extra inning home run off Dan Maselli. That's on the inside corner, a ball and a strike. Cardinals trying to dig in to the two zip Boston lead here in the fourth. Strike two. Good splitter to Jim Edmonds. That's the thing about Schilling with a runner on at third and less than two outs. He can get the strikeout. He has one tonight. 203 during the regular season. Two and two. So he went inside with the fastball, away with the splitter, inside with the fastball. Probably go back out there with the splitter. Runner in third, one out. Edmund strikes out. Two down. That's a terrific job by Veritek and Schilling setting up Edmonds inside with a fastball, back inside. The 1 1 pitch, a splitter. 1 2, up and in. And the splitter low and away. Boy, that is a study in how to pitch. Now with Pujols at third, two out. Here's Reggie Sanders. He walked his first stop. That's down into the corner foul. Sanders with only one RBI this entire postseason, and that came a home run in the division series. Game four at Dodger Stadium. Pujols led off the inning with a double. Roland flat out to right. Edmonds struck out. Sanders grounds to third. Miller can't make a play and it's two to one. The ball came up. Miller did all he could. He stayed in front of it but couldn't chase it down. And make a play. It's two to one here in the fourth inning. 
will probably be an error on Bill Miller. But that in-between hop, it's so important for infielders to read the hop early. And when Bill Miller laid back right there, ball comes up on him, hits the heel of the glove, and he cannot recover in time. So the Cardinals are not only on the board, but they have speed on at first in Reggie Sanders. And Sanders draws a throw. It is an error on Miller. And it is the second error of the night for the Red Sox. And already six in this World Series in less than a game and a half. Tying run at first, two out. Womack already has a hit tonight. And this one right at the back. Cabrera's there, tags it. The Cardinals are on the board. Lead off double by Pujols. It's two to one into the bottom of the fourth. Matt Morris has allowed two runs on two hits. One of the hits, the two-run triple by Veritek. It's two to one, Boston out in front, bottom of the fourth inning, and here is Veritek. We followed by Millar and then Trot Nixon. Matt Morris, when he was at Seton Hall, pitched in the Cape Cod League for Hyannis, and his catcher was Jason Veritek. As the pitch misses low and away, 2 0 with the mist starting up again here at Fenway Park. A 2 0 fastball right down the middle, 2 1. Baratek leading off, takes a strike, 2 and 2. But miss with the fastball, miss with the curve, and then through the fastball strike, and that was the best curve he's thrown all night. Another one. Womack, a wide throw, but out. Here is Matt Morris telling us about that curve ball, how big of a weapon it is for him. My curve ball is my weapon, so uh, the, the, the longer I can, quote unquote, save it, uh, probably the better off I am. But. It's a catch-22 because then I don't have the good feel of it. So if I can throw it early a couple times in some counts where, uh, you know, I'm not going to get hurt and get a good uh, uh, feel of it, and then, um, you know, later in the game when I need it in the situation, uh, hopefully it's there. First pitch is strike on the outside corner to Millar. Good one to get to two strikes on Veritek, and then he got Jason out on a good curveball. Here's the 2 2 curve. Two consecutive good curveballs to Jason Veritek. Millar is grazed by the pitch, and he's on with one out here in the fourth inning. Now, Matt, going back to the curveball, and this ball stays in, inside and hits Kevin Millar right on the left elbow. That'll bring in Trot Nixon one on one out. Nixon his first time up had two runners on and grounded out to third. He is only eight out of 41 this entire postseason for the home run and five RBIs. Started the season with a herniated disc in his back had a terrible quad injury. Finished the season hot in September for the Red Sox. It takes a strike. Matt Morris saying the last time I pitched on short rest was a wiffle ball game when I was 10. Doing it for the first time in his big league career. And he's down by a run in the fourth inning. One on one out for Boston. Strike two. Cardinals in the fifth inning will have Matheny, Anderson, and Renteria. Blown by the bat of Nixon, two out. Strikeout number three for Matt Morris tonight. 
You can play Hit the Pros presented by the all-new GMC Canyon. And face real pitches from today's best hurlers. Log on to FoxSports.com on MSN. Keyword games. GMC, we are professional grade. Two out in the inning, and here comes Bill Miller. A single his first time up, but that's no big shot. Miller, a career 333 hitter here at Fenway Park. Ball one inside. You're just checking the on deck circle for the Boston Red Sox. If there's a foul ball hit over in that area, it's like going through a minefield. I think they have 10 different items weights, rosin, pine tar, weighted bats, lead bats, iron poles. It's a lot of stuff. There's a shot put over there, a discus, a javelin. Here's a 1 1 to Miller. That's into right field. Larry Walker will try to cut it off. Gets to it. Back toward the infield, and Womack will flip it to the plate with runners at second and third. That little effort at the end by Larry Walker just saved a run. It wasn't clean, but he kept it from rattling around in that corner. Yeah, it was almost mishandled. That is a very tough wall. Actually, it hits off his left knee, it appeared. No, the right knee. And then it hits the wall. Larry recovers in time. Millar is not a fast run. If you do have any kind of chance, you would send him with two outs. But Dale Swain, the third base coach, held him up. And now it's Bellhorn. A hitting hero last night for the Red Sox. Second and third. And a ball in the dirt. We talked last night about this catcher, Mike Matheny, and how he blocks pitches in the dirt. And there is the ultimate respect for the teammates for Matheny and for the teammates for Veritech, and a lot of respect between the two catchers. Here's a 1 0. Malhorn hits it to deep center field. Back is Edmonds, it's over his head. Two more runs. Another big hit for Bellhorn. And it's 4 to 1, Boston in the fourth. Championship Series. The press was asking Terry Francona why he didn't get him out of there. Play Pokey Reese. Four consecutive games with big hits. Three home runs and now a double. One of the headlines in the Herald today, Mark of a Winner. How the fortunes and the perception of Bellhorn has changed as Damon almost walked into that pitch. One ball, one strike. A hit batsman in the inning and back to back two out doubles. Miller set it up and Bellhorn cashed in. Schilling now has his biggest lead of the night. Strike two on Damon. Damon two for eight in this World Series. 0 for two tonight. Ooh. Still one and two. get the chance whether it's here in the fourth inning or in the fifth I think it's important to talk about the personality more of this Boston Red Sox team what they were able to overcome in the series against the Yankees and what they're fighting to try to do in this World Series as Damon takes outside two and two.
know you think about being down three games to none to the Yankees at one point being literally three outs away from being swept and you look at this group of Red Sox players and the way they go about their business the way they play the game and after getting that victory in game four they rode that momentum won an extra innings in game five went to New York and won back to back games to get here to the World Series. The 2 2 pitch. Ground ball to second. Inning is over. It's now 4 to 1. And it's Mark Bellhorn with another big hit for Boston. First pitch swinging is Matheny, and he has a base hit into left field to start the fifth inning. Last inning, a chance to visit with Terry Francona. Here's what he had to say out of the Red Sox dugout. Well, Terry Francona, the easy question is, as we are in the fourth inning, what's the word on Schilling and how he's feeling to this point? Well, if you guys know Schill at all, the day he pitches, he's ornery as heck. You don't talk to him, but that's good news. Um, if there was a problem, we'd know from the tr medical staff. Right now, as far as we're concerned, he's just competing. Um, if there's something that comes up during the game, you know, we keep an eye on him. But right now, he's just competing, and I don't think there's anything physical that's going to hold him back right now. So let's ask the other question. Where does pitch count uh, rank as far as how you will judge how deep Schilling goes into this game? You know what? I, I think that's probably the least of our worries. I mean, his arm feels great. He's on his regular rest. Um, that's not an issue and as far as rest goes he can rest all winter as far as you know his arm goes we'll, we'll obviously keep an eye on him but uh, I think right now the biggest thing is just competing and, and what the score is and things like that Terry thanks for the time okay guys 67 is the pitch count to this point and that first delivery to Anderson was hammered foul one of the big reasons that Kurt Schilling signed with the Red Sox that the Red Sox had hired Terry Francona as the manager Played for him and pitched for him in Philadelphia. And loves the guy. One ball, one strike on Marlon Anderson. Popped out his first time up. They're just trying to stay loose and warm out of that Red Sox bullpen. Check on Matheny, who if he goes anywhere would be part of the hit and run but he is not a guy that's going to try and swipe a base Joe one of the reasons that I believe that pitch counts overrated is pitchers feel differently Schilling wants to talk to Veritek pitchers feel differently from a strength standpoint from start to start sometimes their limit could be 90 pitches other times it could be 105 pitches other times they're strong as bulls and it could be 120 pitches. But it seems like baseball over the last 10 years has gotten itself into a position where they've standardized pitch count. Well, if he's at 100 pitches, he can't pitch. I mean, a guy like Pedro Martinez, I think he's proven time and time again this year that 100 pitches may be too much. But for a guy like Schilling, a bull of a man, I mean, his pitch count varies from 90 to, as Terry told us before the game, 125 perhaps. One ball, one strike is the count on Marlon Anderson. One on, nobody out, and Anderson fouls at strike two. Wind whipping around here at Fenway Park. It's picked up a little bit over the last inning. The mist has stopped. Count one ball, two strikes on Anderson. Tony La Russa telling us before the game, he told his team, look, the wind's blowing in here at Fenway Park. You've got to make your pitches. Don't give up walks. Take advantage of the elements against this Boston lineup. Anderson strikes out. Three strikeouts for Schilling. And one out here in the fifth. Well, two walks in the first inning did in Morris. They were followed by the two-run triple by Veritek, a hit batsman. Led to trouble for Morris in the fourth. Yeah, that's the thing. Good fastball from Schilling. Usually guys who walk to first run home. Schilling has walked one tonight. 
He didn't walk anybody in that game six start at Yankee Stadium. And for the season, this power pitcher, Schilling, walked a total of 35 hitters. 32 starts, 35 walks. One on, one out, back to the top of the order. Here's Renteria. Strike one on the inside corner. Cardinals telling us before the game if they get the opportunity, they will drop down bunts to test Schilling. Renteria was one of the guys listed. But Bill Miller is pulled way in over at third. So if nothing else, the ankle of Schilling and his health and the question marks around his fielding abilities pulled Miller out of a typical third base position. Trying to guard against Renneria and others dropping down a bunt. One on one out here in the fifth. To the shortstop Cabrera. A flip. A double play. And the inning is over. Halfway through game two. Red Sox will bat. Cabrera, Ramirez, Ortiz coming up. Four to one Boston. Kurt Schilling is through five innings as he takes a seat in that dugout trying to warm up and at the same time keep that right ankle loose. Had some issues in the top of this fifth. Second to last pitch he looked like he came up a little more gimpy than he was earlier. Bullpen is quiet for the Red Sox and Morris is back to work bottom of the fifth and pitch one is a ball. Up and away to Cabrera. Two and oh. The Red Sox thrilling these fans all season. Up one game to none and leading in game two. Four to one as the pitch is inside three and zero on Cabrera, who's 0 for two. A pair of ground outs, he'll take, and it's three and one. Cal Eldred starting to get loose, and a leadoff walk. His second to last pitch, the top of the fifth inning. After letting it go, comes up with a little limp, then down into that crouched position, trying to keep that right ankle as loose as he can, and then gimping off the mound as he induced the double play ground ball off the bat of Renteria. Here comes Dave Duncan out to talk. We've seen that blood, in the right sock, all night. We saw it in game six at Yankee Stadium. He has bled exactly into the shape of the state of Oklahoma, which is interesting. And that right ankle is the focus of attention for all of New England. And on a, this is about as cold as it's going to get without snow falling. There was some talk of some snow flurries maybe later on in the night. Schilling, while he's been hit a little harder tonight than he was at any point in that game six start at Yankee Stadium has done his job. You look at his pitch total of 73. He's allowed only four hits. And so far one run. An unearned run that scored on an error by Miller at third. Runner at first. Nobody out. Manny Ramirez takes ball one. Meanwhile the, the walk in front of Manny Ramirez and David Ortiz. Just inviting the Red Sox to score more runs. Pitch inside trying to avoid, avoid getting hit. It counts 2 0. Oh. Ramirez looking away. That looked like a backup slider. Sometimes a hitter like Ramirez, a good hitter like Ramirez, sees the slider spin. He thinks it's going to be away. It stays inside and surprises him. Here's a 2 0. Oh. Ramirez hits it in the air to right to Walker. 
One on one out. Let's check in with Chris Myers. Joe, I'm up in the green monster among the people with uh, Tom Hanks. How are you doing, Chris? All right, I'm okay. And uh, Jimmy Fallon, who's uh, doing, doing, doing a movie about the, the Red Sox, right? Yeah, yeah, we were here for like three weeks almost. It was really great. I had a good time. It's a Farley Brothers movie called Fever Pitch. Yeah, uh, who it's, else? It's it? me and Drew Barrymore and the Farley Brothers. It's about a guy who loves uh, the Red Sox, a fanatic, and uh, he has to choose between uh, Drew and the Red Sox. And uh, what about the Red Sox so far? And cheering up here among the people. It's a great like, view. We're like rewriting the ending as this is all happening because this never happens. As Red Sox fans all know, they have the toughest, uh, you know, postseason. This is like amazing and so great to be here right now. And, and, and great work on SNL. Moving on to a movie right. career. And speaking of movies, Tom, I, I know there's no crying in, in baseball, but there is a lot of excitement. You came in just for this. Are you a Red Sox fan? They were not. Fans? Well, I, I grew up in Oakland and Cleveland. I'm an American League bo uh, boy, born and bred. And I, I look, I'm an American, and uh, when, the, when the Boston Red Sox are finally in the World Series, there's nothing wrong with the city of St. Louis. They are lovely people, and they have lovely colors on their baseball uh, uniforms. But come on, I want Billy Buckner to have a good night's sleep for crying out loud. You're the voice of what? What's that? Pete Pacheska is telling me, my producer. Polar Express, right? Uh, you do that? I think, yeah, I think uh, the Warner Brothers is leaving no stone unturned. We're, we're trying to peel people away from that Jimmy Fallon Alfie movie that is going to be going to be sweeping the country. By the way, we're taking a, a Jimmy Fallon coat fund uh, collection tonight, so uh, it's going to die up here. It looks like he's chilly. Thanks for, for your time, and uh, have a coat. Real quick, give us your best Boston uh, accent. Describe what's going on. Throw it back to Joe Buck, who you got to beat in the, oh, in the hotel. I saw him at the hotel. I like, hopefully, hopefully the Red Sox hit one over that monster. You're a wicked piss up here. Let's having a great time. Boston rocks. <laughs> Thanks, guys. <laughs> All right, Chris, thank you. And thanks to Jimmy Fallon and Tom Hanks. And we just bid farewell to Matt Morris here in the fifth inning. The leadoff walk and the fly ball to right. And now with David Ortiz coming up, it's the right-hander Kurt, or rather Cal Eldridge taking over, while Kurt Schilling is hoping for more runs of support in that dugout. It's already four to one Boston on top here in game two and I think we touched on this last night if you think about the legends the sports legends in this city who they continue to celebrate and you think about the reception for Johnny Pesky here last night before the game and Yaz and Fisk and the reception that was here the all-star game for Ted Williams and the way they hold their sports heroes up where will Kurt Schilling rank doing what he did at Yankee Stadium in game six coming back it looked like his postseason was over after that game one start they find a way to get him back on the mound he pitches brilliantly in game six gets it to game seven and now tonight has his Red Sox out in front trying to take a two games to none lead in the World Series. Well, Kurt Schilling may do in one year what other sports heroes in this city. Uh, it's taken them 15 or 16 years to accomplish. Ortiz with one on one out. David Ortiz tonight has walked and scored and grounded out. Ball one up and in. Bobby Orr, Bill Russell, John Havlicek, Bob Cousy. The names go on and on and on. Larry Bird was pretty good up here. Not bad. Here comes a 1-0 pitch. Ortiz takes it on the inside corner. One ball, one strike. Good pitch from Eldred. Cal Eldred relieved last night. Got one out. This one is hit high and deep to right. If it's fair, it's gone. It is foul. And David Ortiz arguing with both the right field umpire Eddie Montague and Brian Gorman the first base umpire saying that ball hooked around the pole. So are the fans down the right field line. And now the umpires are going to get together. 
and talk about it. Ortiz clearly thought it was a fair ball. Home plate umpire Dale Scott also had a view. The three guys that had the best shot, Dale Scott, the home plate umpire, Brian Gorman, the first base umpire, and right field umpire, Ed Montague, he's the crew chief. And Ed Montague will tell Terry Francona. And by the way, Francona is down in the dugout. On the first base side, he is just going on the reaction by David Ortiz. It will stay a foul ball. And it certainly looked on that replay like it was a foul ball. Unless it did. we're getting a skewed angle as we look. The only thing Ortiz could be claiming is what you talked about last night, hitting it over yeah. the foul pole and then it hooking. But from the angle that we have, it's tough to see if that ball went over the pole and then dived down to the right, which is what Ortiz is trying to argue. The ball was called foul and it stays foul. The count's one and two. Two and two now. Lead-off walk. Ramirez flying to right, and now Ortiz flies to Walker for round number two. Just after 10 o'clock here in the East, we're at Fenway Park, Game Two of this World Series with the Red Sox up one game to none and leading tonight behind Schilling, doing it again four to one. This postseason with the Red Sox score first they're seven and zero, oh. and Veritek is the reason the Red Sox scored first with a two out two run triple back in the first after back to back walks to Ramirez and Ortiz Eldred hits Veritek. Eldred coming inside a couple of times to David Ortiz. Balls that were strike, strikes. That, that cutter looked like it cut in and hit Veritek on the right elbow. He's got that elbow pad that makes the sound of being hit, but still grimacing. Two on with two out for Millar. Ball one high. Morris ends up going four in a third innings. He's responsible for the runner at second, Cabrera. He's allowed so far four runs on four hits. There were four walks, three strikeouts, and he hit about it. Eldred has now hit one as he falls behind Millard 2-0. This series will shift to St. Louis after tonight. It's in the 70s in St. Louis today. Cold and misty today here in Boston. A chance for Millar. A 2-0 pitch is in for strike one. Sometimes a hitter, by his very stance, will tell you how to pitch it. Generally speaking, if a hitter has an open stance, like Millar does, foot toward third, you don't pitch him inside, particularly when you're behind in the count. Throw down to second, and Cabrera gets back. It's two and two on Millar. Do that open stance with the left foot toward third base. Generally speaking, a hitter with that type stance, you don't want to come inside to. Particularly in this ballpark, Malara, a very strong hitter, hitting about 90 points higher. Than Full count now, and that will give Cabrera at second and Veritek at first a head start.
Runners go and strike three ends the fifth. Eldred comes out of the bullpen, does his job. And the two, three, and four hitters are coming up for St. Louis sixth inning. Four to one, Boston. The World Series on Fox brought to you by Bank of America. Higher standards by Cialis. Ask your doctor if a free sample of Cialis is right for you. And by Honda, the four-wheel drive, 255 horsepower pilot built by Honda. Sixth inning now and a chance for St. Louis with their big bats coming up. Walker, Pujols, and Roland. If anybody gets on, Edmonds. Walker 0 for 2 tonight. Four hits in game one. Schilling back to work. And a strike on the inside corner to the surprise of Larry Walker. Our Budweiser fantasy player, game one, Larry Walker. His night. Log on to FoxSports.com on MSN. Keyword fantasy baseball. Tonight's game brought to you by Budweiser. Grab a cold, fresh Budweiser. It's game time. That's outside. One ball, one strike. Walker was dealt to the Cardinals after the quote unquote July 31st trading deadline. He had to approve the trade. And one of the interesting quirks for Larry Walker, he has to do everything in threes. Schilling would like to oblige by giving him three strikes as the counts two and two now. Fastball inside, fastball away, fastball inside, fastball away. And three strikes for number 33, one out. Four strikeouts for Schilling. After four fastballs, the splitter gets Larry Walker. When we sat there with Al Leiter in game six of the ALCS, he talked about the reputation of Kurt Schilling being the most prepared starting pitcher in today's game with all the charts. Video work he does, keeping a notebook on hitters. Pujols is two for two with a pair of doubles. He scored the only run of the night for St. Louis, and the count's two and zero. Oh. On the outside corner, two and one. Chilling has not been as dominant as game six. The ALCS tonight, but in the end as effective with a three-run lead. That's on the outside corner, two and two. And now Pujols looks back at Dale Scott, the home plate umpire. Yeah, Larry Walker thought the fastballs were inside, and Pujols thought that last fastball was away, off the plate. Pujols pops it into right center field, slicing the Nixon. Two out. With the bases empty, Roland will be the hitter. Part of the cast of the hit series, That 70s Show, is here at Fenway tonight. And all new episodes begin Wednesday, November 3rd at 8 Eastern and Pacific on Fox. With two out and nobody on. Here's Roland, who's 0 for 2. Rolling is lined out, flied out, strike one. Talked about all the Celtic stars in this great city. There's Bob Crabb, the owner of the New England Patriots, who won again today. They beat the Jets 20 in a row. Oh, and two on Roland. Roland 
and hits it down the left field line. Foul. 21 victories in a row for the New England Patriots. They beat the Jets today by six. 13 to seven. So 21 straight. And can they go the entire season undefeated? An amazing run put together led by Bob Kraft and Bill Belichick. And of course Tom Brady. Here's an 0-2. Ball one. We talk about clutch postseason performers about the right foot of Adam Vinatieri. If the Super Bowl's on the line, who else do you want lining up a kick? Here is a one-two pitch rolling. Left side for Miller, and he kicks another. That should be his second error of the night. And the third of the game for the Red Sox. After committing four last night, really no excuse right there. Bill Miller going down. The ball came up a little bit, hit the heel of the glove, hand comes down, nothing there. I don't think there'll be any apologies coming from Dave Mellor, the head of the grounds crew here at Fenway Park, like he had for La Russa after the bad hop caught Wolmack. In the left collarbone area last night, forcing him to leave the game. Womack is still able to play in the lineup tonight. And here comes Dave Wallace, the pitching coach for the Red Sox, out to talk to Schilling. We have a little comparison with New England and New York. Red Sox defeat the Yankees in the ALCS four games to three. Only team in Major League history to win the series after trailing three games to none, and then 21 in a row as the Patriots defeat the Jets 13 to 7 and the Jets have been off to their fantastic start. So back to the dugout is Wallace getting loose is Alan Embry the left hander. And here is Jim Edmonds. An error has kept this sixth inning for St. Louis alive. Edmonds takes the ball high. Edmonds popped 42 home runs during the regular season. Good for fifth best in the National League. He has three this postseason. Jim Edmonds has not been guessing right with Kurt Schilling all night grounding the first weekly and then striking out you can see how much he was out in front of that breaking ball but he does have the count in his favor right now now it's three and oh I had said two errors on Miller but two errors on balls that were in fair territory Forgot about the one in foul territory, so three errors tonight for Bill Miller, and that ties for the most errors in a World Series game. The other one did not cost the Red Sox. Edmonds thought he had drawn a walk. It's three and one. All three belong to Miller. Nine errors now in the postseason for the Red Sox. Edmonds still at the plate with a 3-1 count. Sanders on deck. And Edmonds grounds to second. Bellhorn can't make the play. This is unbelievable. The defense atrocious for the Red Sox in the first two games of this World Series. And that error will bring the tying run to the plate. It's a remarkable thing about last night's game and tonight's game. Red Sox winning last night four errors contributing to six runs four errors tonight contributing to no runs 
But how often can you taunt this Cardinal offense? And tease and expect them not to deliver. 278 team average during the regular season. That was the best in the National League, and they were the top run producing team in the NL. So another four error night for the Red Sox, and the tying run is up. Reggie Sanders hits one to third, and Miller scrambles to the bag to end the inning. Schilling pitches around two errors in the sixth. The Cardinals have left five. Kurt Schilling, after getting through the top of the sixth inning, getting around a couple more errors. Having a conversation with Terry Francona, you wonder if Schilling is going to go any deeper into this game. Bottom of the sixth inning, Cal Eldred back to work. And the first pitch is strike to Trot Nixon. One ball, one strike. I would think that Kurt Schilling is through. Terry Francona wanted to take him out after five innings at Yankee Stadium. Kurt talked him into going seven. Nixon is on with a leadoff base hit up the middle. But right now there is no action in the Boston bullpen. So perhaps Schilling will go back out there. They did have Embry up in the top of this sixth. And we will keep one eye out on that bullpen to see if any action starts, which would tell you that Schilling is finished for the night. One on, nobody out. Here's Bill Miller, two for two. If Schilling is finished, we'll say at least to this point, he's gone six innings allowed, one run. It was unearned. Four hits, one walk, four strikeouts. There were a total of four errors behind him. This one is driven into right. Walker. One on, one out. And Embry is taking his jacket off out in the bullpen. And Ray King continues to loosen for St. Louis in their pen. And Embry will go back to work. Bellhorn has one of the biggest swings of the night. The Red Sox have had two big ones. And all four of their runs have scored with two out. A triple to score two by Veritek in the first and a double for two RBIs by Bellhorn in the fourth. Four to one bottom to sixth. A strike to Bellhorn. It would be a good uh, time the seventh inning to bring in a left hander because two of the first three hitters the Cardinals have up Womack and Marlon Anderson are both left-handed. Or maybe Tony La Russa will make a move, particularly for Marlon Anderson. That's the cat and mouse game that both managers try to play with one another. Two balls and a strike on Bellhorn. Mark three out of five in this series to this point. Last night two hits the home run in the eighth and tonight the two run double and he's bounced into a double play. Three and one with Damon on deck. And should Bellhorn reach with Ray King ready to go out of the bullpen. May see a pitching change from St. Louis. Bellhorn pops it up. The shortstop, Edgar Renteria, at 
into it just because of the wind. Two out. Our Bank of America higher standard performance is Kurt Schilling. And he is setting new standards pitching with that displaced tendon in his right ankle. And now with Schilling sitting in the dugout with four strikeouts, six innings under his belt. With only one on and two out, Damon takes a strike as Eldred remains in the game. So a big out by Eldred to get Bellhorn on the pop up. The opposite way for a base hit. First hit tonight for Johnny Damon. He's one for four. And it's two on, two out. Cabrera coming up. Good job of hitting by Johnny Damon. That pitch right where Cal Eldred wanted it. And that hit is right where Johnny Damon wanted it. So now Orlando Cabrera, who has his eight game hitting streak in this postseason on the line, 0 for 2 with a walk. Two on, two out. Ball one with Manny Ramirez on deck. Walmack, Matheny, and Anderson, the scheduled hitters, at the top of the seventh. One ball, one strike. Mike Matheny holds the glove there to get Dale Scott a good look at that strike. Gary Francona thought it was high, but the Cardinals get the call. Two on, two out, and Cabrera stays up there with a count one and two. Continues to get loose. See a shot of Schilling talking in the dugout. There's even more evidence to suggest that he's finished for the night. We heard from Terry Francona earlier the day that Kurt Schilling is pitching. Nobody talks to him. In this case, because of the circumstances, the only guys that have been to this point are medical staff. But that has changed after getting through the first six. Another one two pitch. Two and two. Breaking ball misses from Eldred. Picture perfect block from Mike Matheny. Red Sox as they lead it six to one. A two out 
triple, a two-out double, and now another two-out double on a high fastball, high on the green monster. at first on that ball hit off the wall all six of the Boston Red Sox runs have scored with two out Cabrera continues his hitting streak it's up to nine games and it's Manny Ramirez at the plate Cabrera got a great jump and stopped Count even to the ball and a strike. Yeah, I'd obviously like to correct myself. It was a single off the wall. Watching Johnny Damon score easily. Cabrera could have been on at second base. The ball off the cutoff man, Edgar Renteria's glove. And ended up in the middle of the infield, and Cabrera stopped it first. Two balls and a strike on Ramirez. Manny Ramirez has hit in 14 straight postseason games. Hitless tonight. A five run Red Sox lead in the sixth. And Ramirez flies it into center. Long run for Edmonds. Can't get there. And it's first and third, two out. The win knocking that ball down in center field and that will continue the hitting streak for Manny Ramirez and that will end the night for Cal Eldred. See how deep Edmonds was at the start of the play. Couldn't get there in time and now with first and third two out Ortiz coming up. King is coming in for St. Louis. With the hope of trying to stay to within five runs of the Boston Red Sox, Tony La Russa makes a pitching change, brings in the left-hander Ray King for David Ortiz, first and third, two out. Strike one from the only left-hander the Cardinals have in their pen. Cabrera with a two-out, two-run single. Fly ball single into center that fell in front of Edmonds off the bat of Ramirez. And an 0 1. One ball, one strike. Last night, Ortiz hit a rocket on a pitch from Ray King. That's the ball that came up and caught Womack in the collarbone. Jason Marquis, who is scheduled to start game four. This World Series getting loose for the Cardinals in their bullpen. Strike two on Ortiz. Ray King coming back and crowding David Ortiz with the fastball after the slider away. First and third, two out, and Ortiz reaches for it and stays alive. Cardinals are on a strange run where the home team has won the last eight games. All seven of the LCS. First time that's ever happened. Ortiz strikes out and the inning comes to a close. We go into inning number seven getting late for the Cardinals down by five. Now. Pokey Reese is into the game, six to one Boston, top of the seventh inning. Reese trying to improve this defense for the Red Sox. Alan Embry is on the mound. He worked last night, didn't retire a batter, gave up a hit and a run. Last night the Red Sox committed four errors. Tonight, 
four more errors prior to last night. The last team to commit four errors in a World Series game, the Milwaukee Brewers in game six of the 1982 World Series. The Brewers lost to the Cardinals that game 13 to 1. And the Red Sox won last night despite the four errors, and tonight they lead by five as we play here in the seventh inning. Tony Womack first up took a strike and now swings at another. It is a unique and very interesting group to say the least. And Terry Francona runs out of that Boston Red Sox dugout and out of that bullpen and Terry Francona has used that bullpen masterfully during this postseason. Ball one to Womack. We talked about it last night. Think that the reason the Red Sox are here, that bullpen, David Ortiz and the bullpen. The Red Sox just got the best of all worlds in the bottom of the sixth. They were going to take Schilling out, and they added two more runs to their lead to make it a five run lead now in the seventh. Walmack hits it foul. We started to talk about it earlier, and you and I have talked about it off the air. If there was ever a team, that was going to defy the odds, buck the trends, and come back from a three games to none hole against the Yankees and now try to give the Red Sox their first World Series victory since 1918. They would figure that it would be this type group for Boston. I mean, they are a scrappy bunch, the guys that don't seem to really care what's said about them. They play for one another and as Terry Francona has said time and time again these guys may make mistakes they may throw to the wrong base from time to time they may run into outs but they love to play baseball. The one two pitch strikes out this is a very unique bunch. Said over and over again last October, Damon and Millar said, We're just a bunch of idiots. We just go out and play baseball, and they have made Terry Francona a very happy man. One ball, no strikes. Athene takes strike one. Gordon Needs, who writes for the Boston Globe, had a great closing line to an article yesterday as you look at John Henry, the owner of the Red Sox. Gordon said, If these guys are idiots, Never has ignorance created such bliss. Here's a 1 1. Matheny takes inside. Two balls and a strike from Embry. Blissful indeed as the Red Sox try to win their first world championship since 1918. Saw John Henry. He's the owner of the Red Sox. A guy who grew up on a farm in Arkansas as a diehard Cardinal fan. Count goes to three and one on the feet. After purchasing the Florida Marlins, he invited Stan Musial to come down and throw out the ceremonial first pitch on opening day. Listen to the Cardinal games night after night as a kid growing up. His ambition in life at one point was to get a job. In St. Louis, that paid him enough money to allow him to afford season tickets to Cardinals games. Now he owns the Boston Red Sox. With one out here in the seventh, Matheny stays up there and the count stays full. However, even with all that love, 
the St. Louis Cardinals as a young man now owning the Boston Red Sox he was asked I believe it was by Gordon Eads the piece that was in there today would be your perfect World Series scenario he said a four game sweep trying to bring a World Series championship to Boston three two pitch two out. Speaking of season ticket holders, let's check in again with Chris Myers. Joe, I'm in the uh, bleacher seats with 79-year young Annie Quinn, who's a 40-year season ticket holder. Did, did you ever think you'd see the Red Sox be this close to a World Series title? They've been close before. Only one pitch away in 86. Okay. One strike away. We should have had it. You've seen a lot over the years. Your husband used to come to the games yes, with you? Yes, he came up until about two years before he really took sick. And he died on the uh, 30th of June last year. Well, he'd, he'd love to see this ball club, oh, I'm oh. sure. How would you describe this group? I, the, I, I said it was going to be even better than last year because the defense really has been better, except for these games that they've had the errors. Right. But most of the time, they've made all the plays behind the pitcher. And as long as they have the plays behind the pitcher, the pitcher does a good job. And you score the games? Yes. All right. And what do you think of Kurt Schilling? Should he have left oh, him in a little he, longer? I guess. I, I, I wouldn't mind if it, unless he, uh, they do do a lot of that, taking him out too soon. <laughs> they, well, what, get, what is good having six runs in the first inning? Yeah, well, that's, that's happened. Not, not with him so much. They, ha yeah. they have a formula. Now, some Red Sox fans had have told me, Miss Quinn, that, that, that beating the Yankees was it. No matter what happens after this, uh, oh, your life's well, complete. I want to win it all. I want to win it all. All right, I hear you on that. Thanks very much for being a great baseball it was fan. Just a, at first, I didn't even want the Yankees in it, but now it's even more pleasurable to come up from three down to come back and beat them. Okay. All right, will you stay warm, all right? I sure will. Thanks a lot, Joe, Tim. All right, Chris. Feeling threatened at all, Tim? Any a fierce competitor. He knows her stuff. <laughs> Does she ever? That was great. One ball, two strikes, two out, nobody on. Taguchi, pinch hitting for Marlon Anderson. Embry trying to strike out the side. The Red Sox are trying to go up two games to none on the Cardinals. We look at this foul tip again that came up and caught the home plate umpire Dale Scott. The Cardinals can't wait to get this World Series back home where this postseason they have been devastating. Ask the Dodgers, ask the Astros, who took a three games to two series advantage in the NLCS to Bush Stadium, only to lose two straight. Stuck out the side. He'll mark down a backward K. And we will stay here and give you Donna Summer with God Bless America. To honor and recognize the sacrifices made by all of our servicemen and women currently stationed across the globe, we welcome the five time Grammy Award winner who will present God Bless America, Boston's own Donna. Summer. God bless America, land that I love. Stand beside her. From the mountain to the prairie, through the ocean, white with bones, God bless America. My
World Series on Fox brought to you by New Lasta. Ask your doctor how you can be ready with New Lasta. By Warner Brothers New Motion Picture Alexander. In theaters everywhere Wednesday, November 24th. And by Nissan and your Nissan dealer. Fourth pitcher on the night takes over for the Cardinals. And it's the right hander, Jason Marquis. He will start game four for St. Louis, and I like this move by Tony LaRusa. Marquis has been ineffective to this point in the postseason. But there was a very good sinker ball. He will be working with a ton of rest when his turn comes up in game four. This may take a little bit of the edge off for Marquis. It introduces him to World Series baseball. It might take a little bit of that higher octane, which works against the sinker. Off the deliveries from Marquis as he hits the outside corner. And now Baratek is in the hole, one ball, two strikes. Actually, Jason being reintroduced to the World Series. He was in last night's game as a pinch runner and stumble around second base. That is hammered into center field. Back is Edmonds at the wall to make the catch over the shoulder. What a catch by Edmonds to start the bottom of the seventh inning. Nobody makes this catch like Jim Edmonds. He has coined this catch. Against the wall, over the shoulder, Center fielders in baseball marvel at the Marvel. <laughs> He's Captain Marvel. <laughs> Six time Gold Glove Award winner out in center. He combines not only great range, he loves to play shallow, can go back on the ball better than any center fielder out there. Torrey Hunter, obviously outstanding for the Twins as well. Edmund starts a little closer toward the plate. Goes back and gets him and has a tremendous throwing on. I think Torrey is forced to play a little deeper because he plays in the Metrodome for the Minnesota Twins. And balls that scoot by you on the artificial surface, but Jim Edmonds playing shallow in St. Louis and shallow here at Fenway to make a fine, fine catch. 3 0. Oh. So Marquis. Pitching for the first time in World <laughs> Series play. A break. That's low for a one out walk. Anytime you see a center fielder go back and make a catch over his shoulder, you think about the 1954 World Series. Words. Back in 54, that was the voice of Jack Brickhouse, and in this case tonight, Veritek hitting it out to Edmonds in one of the deeper parts of the park for out number one. That was followed by the walk, and Minkiewicz will come off the bench, run for Millar, and then take over at first base. One on, one out. Trot Nixon at the plate. Ball one. Nixon one for three tonight. Only his ninth hit this postseason. And Timlin gets loose. One aspect to this World Series, which if this series should last more than four or five games and get back here to Boston next weekend, you wonder how much over the next two or three games Terry Francona will have to go back to Embry and Timlin trying to get to full. There are really three guys that Terry Francona trusts out of that bullpen for the Boston Red Sox. Tony La Russa has a bullpen filled with guys that he is willing to bring into a ball game. But it's that trio Embry Timlin and Fulk. They've got the Red Sox into the postseason. Got them through the ALCS against the Yankees. Two out here in the seventh. It 
is coming up on 11 o'clock in the East, and we give you the John Hancock game summary. Bottom of the seventh inning, six to one. Matt Morris left after four and a third, pitching on short rest tonight. Kurt Schilling, seven innings in game six of the ALCS, four hits. Tonight, six innings, four hits, no earned runs. And all of the run scoring tonight for the Red Sox and the one for the Cardinals, for that matter, scoring with two out. Miller has two hits tonight, a rough night in the field, committing three errors. Single, a double, a run scored, and he's flying to right. And at the knees, one ball, one strike. In the opening uh, before last night's game, we talked about the confidence that the Red Sox have now. And you can just imagine, as a team, coming back against the Yankees, winning four in a row, and the last two nights committing eight errors, winning one game, and well ahead in this one. They are playing with a world of confidence. Almost overcoming anything in their minds. But what will happen when this series goes to St. Louis? It'll be game three on Tuesday night. And the Cardinals so far are undefeated at home this postseason. And the numbers are so lopsided with what they have done at home and on the road. It will be a confident Cardinals bunch even if they are down two games to none because of these numbers. 6 0 record at home, only one road victory during the postseason this year. Look at the team average, the difference at home and on the road. Over 100 points better at home. The runs per game, just about double. And the home runs that they have hit, over twice as many. The 2 2 pitch. That ball is foul. Still 2 and 2 on Miller. On deck is Pokey Reese, who hasn't hit tonight. He's taking over for Bellhorn defensively at the top of this inning. Cardinals will have the top of their order at the top of the eighth. Marquis is trying to keep it a five run game. Full count. Jason coming to the Cardinals along with left hander Ray King for JD Drew and Eli Marrero. JD Drew having a terrific year. For Bobby Cox's Atlanta Braves. Marquis, a very good regular season, trying to find it here in the postseason as he has walked two in his first inning of work. And with two on, two out, here comes Pokey Reese. Reese digs his way in, only one at bat this postseason. Up at the top of your screen, your reminder for game three of this World Series. Eight Eastern, seven Central. The Red Sox in St. Louis. Pedro Martinez against Jeff Supon. Supon has had the best postseason among all the Cardinal starters in 2004. He's the starter and winner matched up against Roger Clemens in game seven of the NLCS and he won the division series against the Dodgers in Los Angeles Reese one ball one strike think how this inning started with the ball hit by Baratek caught by Edmonds over the shoulder for out number one, then a walk. Nixon fly to center. A walk to Miller. And two strikes now on Pokey Reese. A father and son taken in 
World Series baseball here at Fenway Park. Ball two on Reese with Johnny Damon on deck. Reyes, the right-hander, getting loose. Active in this World Series. Left off the roster the first two rounds. Still two and two on Reese. You can get the new MLB Authentic Collection Premier Jacket and wear what the players wear. The MLB Authentic Collection available on MLB.com. Or 888 MLB shop. Close, make the fan. Two on, two out, two two pitch has popped up. Pujols waits for it. Two up third in the top of the eighth. Top of the order for the Cardinals, down by five. Third pitcher of the night for the Red Sox, Mike Timlin. And so far, Tim, the pitching for the Red Sox taking on the very good four spots in this Cardinal lineup. They let Walker get hot last night, but nobody else. Tonight, Pujols has a pair of doubles, but the other three have been shut down. That's a pretty good formula if you want to beat St. Louis. Well, that's the one thing that a dominant starter can do, a dominant guy like Kurt Schilling coming in and just shutting the door on these great Cardinal hitters. Albert Pujols has gotten to him for a couple of doubles, or got to him for a couple of doubles. Since then, Embry for one, and now Timlin. Doug Mankiewicz stays in to play first, and Timlin, here in the eighth inning, will deal with the top of the lineup. Any hint of trouble, Gary Francona has proven he is not afraid to bring Keith Folk in for more than three outs as the strength is into Renteria. Edgar 0 for 3 tonight bounced to short three times once for a double play. Let's go Red Sox. That misses 2 and 1. Think about the postseason for the Red Sox. They beat the Anaheim Angels three in a row to win the division series. Then they lost the first three to the New York Yankees. And now they're on the verge that they can hold the lead here of winning six in a row. Four against the Yankees and two against the Cardinals. Three balls and a strike on Renteria. It's been a good week around here. I'll say. A leadoff walk. See if that gets something started for St. Louis. Timlin pitched in last night's game, won an inning and a third, allowed one run on one hit. And now Larry Walker steps in. With Albert Pujols on deck. Those were two huge runs scored in the bottom of the sixth inning, driven in on a two out, two run single off the green monster by Orlando Cabrera. That was when the Red Sox were making the transition from the starter Schilling to their bullpen. A strike to Walker. Again, Schilling, who threw 94 pitches, six innings. One run, no earned runs, four hits, one walk, four strikeouts, and pitched around four errors. High hopper off the bat of Walker. One on, one out. The put out one three is a throw by Timlin, got Walker by a step. And here's Pujols. Two for three with the two doubles and the only run scored tonight for St. Louis. After Pujols, it's Roland. After Roland, it's Edmonds. After the leadoff walk, Larry Walker retired and Pujols hits it left side for a base hit. 
past the diving Bill Miller. First and third, one out. Pujols three out of four tonight. Renteria had to hold up with the Cardinals trailing by five, thinking that maybe Bill Miller would have a shot at this ball just out of Bill's reach. Now the Cardinals have them on if they can get a big hit from a guy like Rowan. That closes the gap as you see Renteria delaying and then going to third after the ball goes through. They start to stir in the bullpen for the Red Sox. Nobody getting loose yet. They meaning he. Yeah. <laughs> and he is full. And he is going to start loosening up right now. Here's Roland. There's ball one from Timlin. Timlin. And again, this is the point about this World Series. And getting a lot of work. On, Timlin was busy all year out of the bullpen. A lot of work. Same for Embry and for full closing games. Roland takes low. It's 2-0. Timlin was in 76 games this year during the regular season to Terry Francona. And that's a career high for the 38 year old right hander. Been all over the postseason as Roland backs out of there with a count 2 0. Chance for the Cardinals to jump back in it. Roland had an opportunity last night to put the Cardinals on top. As he takes a strike in the eighth inning last night. Well, after the Cardinals tied it thanks to two Manny Ramirez errors and left. The intentional pass to Pujols. The bases were loaded for Roland and he popped up. It stayed 9-9 and the Red Sox won it on the Bellhorn home run 11-9. Two and two on Roland. Renteria and Pools aboard, and this crowd comes alive. Still two and two. Raw night at Fenway Park. A raw two nights for the Cardinals here at Fenway. They have not had the lead in these two games against the Red Sox. Trailing by five here in the eighth, two on, one out. And desperately needing a hit from Scott Rowland. Cardinals in their World Series history, largest deficit overcome to win three runs. Down by five and a 3 2 pitch. Instead, Timlin steps to third and looks to first. Last time the Cardinals overcame that three run deficit, 1982, the last time the Cardinals won the World Series over Milwaukee. Who also is running and rolling fouls it. Tony LaRusse's confidence in Scott Rowland putting the ball in play against the sinker ball and sending Albert Pools normally when you trail by five, even with the count three and two. You'd be more passive on the bases here. 
Pujols running and Roland hits it in the air to center. Damon is back. Having to come in. Tagging at third is Renteria. He'll come in to score, but the Red Sox want the out. Two out here in the eighth inning in a 6 2 game. Zach fly by Roland. That's his first World Series RBI, but not what he wished for. No, Roland will go into the dugout. He'll get handshakes when actually the Red Sox accomplished what they wanted to do. They got the out. Roland gets a handshake. And what the Cardinals needed was a hit from Roland, not a sack fly. So now with Edmonds coming up, Baratek comes out to talk. And you wonder if the Red Sox are buying time to allow Folk enough of an opportunity to get loose and that is the case as Francona is coming out. So with Edmonds coming up and an opportunity with one swing to make it a two run game Terry Francona makes his way to the mound. And we expect the pitching change and here it comes Folk coming in. What a job he's done this postseason for the Red Sox another chance. We're in the eighth inning of game two. This February, Fox takes center stage for two of sports' biggest events with the Great American Race, the Daytona 500. The NFL crowns a new champion at Super Bowl 39. Sports' greatest moments continue to unfold this February only on Fox. And Keith Folk. Two out of three in save chances, but that does not tell the story of what he's done for Terry Francona out of the bullpen. And in his last 12 outings since the 25th of September, Folk's ERA is zero. Four out of five in save chances, an opponent sitting only 132 against him. Edmonds last night struck out against Fold. Called out looking on strikes with the bases loaded. The game tied in the eighth. Tim went two thirds of an inning. One run, one hit, one walk, no strikeouts. Pujols takes second as Edmonds flies one foul and out of play into left. It's one and two. Red Sox giving Albert Pujols second base. As Benkiewicz was playing behind him, and Pujols tried to take advantage of that, but Edmonds fouled it away. Not insignificant with two out in the eighth if he can get into scoring position, That's and Edmonds right. could come up with a hit. Yeah. They hold him closer now as Edmonds takes a pitch up and away. Ninth inning, a different situation, but with Pujols at first, and Hi. And that last pitch, high, stayed between Pujols and the bag. Edmonds hitless on the night. And that continues as Folk continues his masterful work this postseason. Bottom of the eighth inning, Red Sox bat. It's 6 2. The World Series on Fox brought to you by Dodge. You can take life as it comes, or you can grab life by the horns. Dodge by John Hancock, official sponsor of Major League Baseball. And by America Online. Want a better internet? You belong at America Online. While they play a little Neil Diamond here at Fenway Park, I think back to national anthem and the job done by James Taylor tonight what a beautiful rendition of the Star Spangled Banner done in a unique way and I understand that James Taylor practiced that five times today at Fenway Park to get it right and it was worth all the preparation one pitch one out as Al Reyes takes over here in the eighth inning Marquis one shutout inning with two walks and Damon Rounds out to short. Also, a neat rendition of God Bless America by Donna Summer. And these fans have been entertained 
before, during, and then they entertain themselves after games here in Boston. First pitch is a strike on the outside corner. Reyes is a guy that was added to the World Series roster for Tony La Russa. He takes the place in essence of Steve Klein. A big loss not having Klein available. Klein in 67 games a left hander had a 1.79 ERA out of the bullpen. A real weapon that was lost because of the tendon injury. The index finger in his pitching hand. That's low two balls and a strike. Al Reyes is the guy who hit Nomar Garcia Parra with a pitch on the wrist back in the year 2000 right here at Fenway Park a game that we did little did we know at the time how serious that injury was as the pitch is low three balls and a strike it will be very interesting to see where Nomar Garcia Parra ends up for the 2005 season traded to Chicago to the Cubs. Part of a four team swap that brought Orlando Cabrera from Montreal to Boston. He may have to, in essence, prove that he can get through a season healthy before he cashes in on another big deal. I agree. As Cabrera pops it up, Athene fights the wind and the rain, juggles it, makes the catch, two out. And the batter will be Manny Ramirez. Nomar Garcia Parra did not bring the Cubs the lift they thought he would when they got him at the trading deadline. The Achilles tendon problem was still there. And they speculated in the paper today, the Boston Globe, that it may be a one year deal in LA or back with Chicago for Garcia Parra. So he can prove himself again as Manny Ramirez steps in with the bases empty, two out. Ramirez floated to hit the center his last time up, takes the ball. Chicago Cubs, a game and a half ahead in the wild card standings with nine games left to play. They went two and seven in their last nine games in that day at Shea Stadium. Two teams cost them the wild card, Tim, and you were there. Yep. Not only at Shea Stadium, but at Wrigley. At the end of the year, as Ramirez has the count even one and one. New York Mets and the Cincinnati Reds. Of all the teams. Yeah. Then the Atlanta Braves came in and won two out of three. The last weekend of the season, eliminating the Cubs. One ball, one strike. Reyes trying to turn in a perfect inning. Deals and misses up and in. Reyes got to Memphis a month into the season and ended up leading the Pacific Coast League. That's right, Memphis is in the Pacific Coast League. He led the league in saves. Here's a 2 1. Three balls and strike. You grew up in Memphis, spent a lot of time on the beaches, <laughs> looking out over the Pacific Ocean. Yep. Guys, two for two with that outfit. Ramirez chops one to second for Womack. The Cardinals will have their final chance. Polk will go back to work. 6 2 Boston trying to go up two games to none. Memories of a lifetime for fathers and sons here at Fenway Park. Fathers, sons, brothers, mothers, daughters, grandmothers. The courtship of Eddie's father. One of the great shows from my youth. Here's Reggie Sanders. First up in the ninth inning. Facing full. Taking ball one. Sanders hitless tonight. We asked.
ask you to stay tuned tonight for the Bank of America post game show as Sanders takes his strike and it's one and one. Walmack will follow then Matheny the scheduled hitter. Flips it out of play off to the right. One and two. Dave Kapler comes into the game to take over in left field from Manny Ramirez. Another four error night, but it could end up as another Boston Red Sox victory. The pitching of Kurt Schilling. Embry a good inning. Timlin got two outs in the eighth, and Folk is again trying to finish it. For the Boston fans, the one two out of play. Following our telecast will be your late local news, except on the West Coast. For those watching in the Boston area, Fox 25 will have an expanded edition immediately after the game, and KTVI Channel 2 in St. Louis will also have expanded coverage for this series. As a travel day tomorrow and then picks up with game three in St. Louis on Tuesday night. Here's a one two. one two. It's amazing no matter how much work Folk gets. He seems to come in and throw the same every time it's 88 89 with his fastball and that keep you off balance and make you look bad change up. That's back and out of play. You were talking about the courtship of Eddie's father. I was thinking this night is almost taking on a a different movie, almost a Jekyll and Hyde type, foggy, London, misty, and, and that really is one of the reasons that Folk has been so successful. His pitches are almost Jekyll and Hyde, like personalities. They are so different. Straight changeup and the fastball. The difference in speed about eight miles an hour but it's all in the arm motion. There are only really two closers in the game today. He's active that I can think of that really feature that change up as their outfits and the other one's Trevor Hoffman. Trevor Hoffman with San Diego right. Trevor throwing a bit harder than folk. But again, it's all in the arm motion. If you can throw your change up, like your fastball, and make the hitters give just a little, you've got them. Sanders in a good battle here, trying to get it started. Cardinals down by four in the ninth. Patriots won their 21st in a row earlier this afternoon. Red Sox trying to win their sixth in a row. Four over the Yankees and two over St. Louis. Still a full count. In case you were wondering, the Red Sox in World Series play taking a two games to nothing series lead twice nine appearances they did it the last time they were in the World Series back in 1986 beating the Mets on the road Sanders went one out Folk has faced two and struck out two and the Polar Express plays of the game are the three big swings two out two run hits the triple by Veritek in the first. The double by Bellhorn in the fourth. That scored two. And the two out, two run single by Cabrera in the sixth. That made it six to one. It's now six two. Womack takes ball one. Oh, 
Womack lines one to right. Nixon two out. And the Red Sox are on their way to a two games to nothing lead. With Mike Matheny stepping to the plate. Boston leading 6 2 in the ninth. Pedro Martinez and Jeff Supon in game three on Tuesday night as Matheny takes the ball high. Matheny to short. Cabrera. The Red Sox are up two games to none. Four errors, the magic number again tonight. And a 6 2 victory on the heels of an 11 9 win in game one. The Red Sox Nation with a world of confidence. From the players on down, as you look at our final score. Six to Boston. Folk finished. Does not get the save. Wasn't a save opportunity. But in the end, it's Kurt Schilling going six tonight. One run, four hits, no earned runs, one walk, four strikeouts. And so you know, 48 teams have taken a two games to none series lead. 77% of the time, that team. It's up two games to none has gone on to win the series. We welcome you to the Bank of America post game show. With the mist continuing to fall at Fenway Park, they celebrate a 6 2 win. And while we sit up here in the booth, we will go down to Kevin Kennedy. Jason Veritek, uh, you know, it's the first triple in the World Series since 1996. First of all, take us through that, what the feeling was like getting you guys on the board early. Um, you know, I was just trying to have a quality at bat, make sure I didn't, I wasn't over anxious, and I saw the ball well, and um, I was able to hit, get a change up in the middle of the plate, and I was able to get a good part of the bat on it. And when I say triple, obviously I mean for a catcher, you and I being catchers. We don't, we run all that well, but you were flying tonight. Take us through Kurt Schilling, what you guys talk about the game plan. Obviously, game uh, six in New York, he was phenomenal. He repeated that again tonight. Well, we made some adjustments while we were out there that we didn't, didn't really talk about, and um, you know, it's about executing pitching. That's what pitching's about, and he did that. I know that he prepares extremely well for the opposition, but how do you prepare for him? I mean, when do you know that he's going to come out? Does he say something to Terry Francona? Does he talk to you between innings? Well, I mean, he was battling out there. You could see that he was battling with his ankle, and um, we did the right job of getting him out of that game. All right, what's up next? The feeling, have you ever seen the crowd like this? You've played here a long time, but can you feel it? what these guys are feeling? They're two games away from uh, something that hasn't happened since 1918. Well, you know, we just need to concentrate on what got us here, and that's, that's focus and pitch to pitch and try and outplay that team over there. Jason, good luck in St. Louis. Thanks Thank a lot. Okay. Joe, let's go back upstairs to you. All right, Kevin. Thank you very much. And let's go to the other side and check in with Chris Myers. Joe, just outside the clubhouse, Kurt Schilling waited for his teammates to come off the field. Congratulations uh, to your team at a cor another courageous performance uh, from you. How, how do you feel? I like I've been beat up a little bit. Yeah. I'm, I'm a little sore, but it don't matter right now. <laughs> Tougher than the first time out? Yeah, there's a lot, of, a lot of obstacles to overcome. I will never use the words unbelievable in the Lord again in my life, though. I can promise you that. Yeah, it looked like there was a, a misstep uh, just before you, you came out. Did you, did you injure something there, hurt yourself? Well, uh, 
about the, uh, the third inning, I think I, I tweaked my hip flexor a little bit. So uh, just kind of piling on things right there at that point. But um, it, it was uh, it was stiffening up. And the weather didn't help, and we had some long innings, which did help. It didn't help. So, uh, but we, we got through it. If this uh, goes further, will you be able to pitch oh, again? I, you know, I'm not even thinking about that right now. I'm not even thinking about it. Are you thinking uh, going back to St. Louis, wrapping this up? Uh, you know what? I hopefully I won't have to pitch again, but I guarantee you that team believes in themselves as much as we believe in ourselves. Can you just comment on uh, this entire uh, team and the kind of series uh, that this has been so far coming off of uh, the drama of the Yankee series? Well, you know what? This is a team. This is a true That's team. It's it's uh, every guy is is in this for each other. I mean, I care so much about my teammates that the you know I'll do anything I can to be a part of this and, and to contribute. And I think every one of us feels that way. I right, hope you feel better. Thanks again. Yes, thank okay. you. Appreciate right. that. Kurt Schilling. Let's go back up to Joe Buck. All right. And our thanks to Kurt Schilling for coming out and talking. Chris and Kevin with the interviews. Veritech got the scoring started with the two out two run triple. All the RBIs in the run scoring tonight for Boston with two out. They have won six straight in the postseason. They are up two games to none as the series travels tomorrow and opens up in St. Louis game three on Tuesday night. Pedro Martinez and Jeff Supon. Genie Zelasco on the other side of the break as we continue from Fenway after this.